What up? I do shit like that all the time, and Elaine's like, don't be arrogant, you look arrogant. You look arrogant, he's just being sarcastic. We don't really know what I'm doing. It's his on camera persona. No, you reckon I've got a. Well, I'm, I think. We should probably begin the video. You think I've got an online persona? Well, I think because it's been like 10 years of us filming, but even so, it's still quite strange to be talking to like a camera. You know, like we know it's gonna get to you guys eventually, but it's quite odd to be set up here talking. So his way to get over that is to be a little bit weird and then it throws him off and then you're like relaxed. Would I be correct there? Yeah, it's very complicated. It's very complicated. But before we get too philosophical and meta, we are in a Borneo jungle, which yeah. is not somewhere that I thought that I would ever be on, no. on a boat. No, we love like how random our lives are. Like if you had have asked me years ago, do you think you'd be here? I would say no. Like of all places, I hadn't even heard of Borneo. It's not a very popular tourist destination. And that's what I love about exactly. boat life, is you end up in places you never would have otherwise. There are a few tourists here, but not many. So, there are crocodiles, Sorry, tigers, thanks. pygmy elephants, giraffes. Here we go, continue. It's gonna get weirder before it gets more normal. Cassowaries. There's so much wildlife here and we can't wait to start spotting it all. We've just seen a baby crocodile and yeah, I'm so happy you're joining us here this week. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's go up a river. Welcome back to the island of Borneo, which is shared by three countries, Malaysia, Indonesia and Brunei. Our vessel, La Vagabond, is cruising in the Malaysia part and we recently sailed 200 nautical miles over three days to get to this river absolutely teeming with life. Borneo is known for its rich biodiversity, including rainforests, wildlife and numerous endemic species. Myself, Riley, our two kids, Lenny and Darwin, and three friends and crew couldn't wait to navigate deeper into the river and camp out under the stars. Oh. Riley, what was going on in the engine room? Uh, it's just overheating. That's why I was playing with the fans. For those of you who missed it, in last week's episode, our engine room was overheating and Riley was poking around down there when his finger slipped into an engine cooling fan he was checking on. He's okay, but the grinding noise it made will stick in our minds for a long time after this. So I pulled out a relay this morning which stopped one of the alternators, so we're getting half the charge, but we don't need, we don't, honestly don't need as much power as we've sort of got. Um, so that just means that it's not overheating. We're going okay. I was pretty worried. I was very disappointed and a little bit concerned yesterday as to how, like what that represented for our cruising season. But today, you know, having had a sleep and a, and a feed, it being a better frame of mind, I'm, uh, Everything's gonna be okay? Bullish, or just happy? So happy you're cleaning. Yeah, this is a, Whoa. This is a very rare sight. Yeah, Ellie just put a bucket through the window by accident. <laughs> I got a bit carried away. <laughs> Pineapple? So nice, hey? Sounds of animals and insects quickly became omnipresent. While there are several hundred species of animals that call this jungle home, there are several thousand insects that are also reliant on this phenomenal jungle ecosystem too. As part of Lenny's homeschooling today, it was his mission to spot as many different species as possible. Darwin needs to sleep. Oh, I was just about to have a lovely nap, it was dozing off and then it was a bit of a ruckus, so what happened Elena? I'm still eating some chocolate, so excuse my brown teeth, but <laughs> I saw the first crocodile of the trip. It wasn't very big, but 
A crocodile is a crocodile. I just saw it Where's slip Darwin? into the water. There's more wildlife the further up the river we're going. How crazy though. There's already been a sea snake, the monkeys, and um, <laughs> what else? And a crocodile. Yeah. Hectic. <laughs> Did you see it, Lenny? <laughs> I don't know. I know a little bit of Spanish. What's um elephant in Espanol? It's good, you know what it's going to oh. be? Elefante. Probably. It will be, and it was snake air. Darwin was uh, learning it the other day. He was doing well repeating it back. When a fellow sailor first sent us an email recommending this river to Riley and I, I'm not going to lie in that there was initially some hesitation on my behalf. I don't know, maybe because of the crocs that surrounded us and our children, which are perfect bite size. Then there's the mud flats, which we were bound to run aground on. And the fact that we had a 60 foot trimaran and some parts of this river got narrow. But once we arrived and were doing it, it was like all those premeditated fears of the known and unknown disappeared. And I felt right at home. The Kinabatangan River stretches over 560 kilometres. Its floodplain is one of the most exceptional ecosystems in the world. This region is not only rich in biodiversity, but also in cultural diversity. It's home to various indigenous communities, each with their own unique traditions, languages, and ways of life that have coexisted with the river's natural rhythms for generations. Thank you. You're wow. Wow. And sourdough bread, <laughs> Jamie and Ellie oh, yeah. whipped us up a pasta tonight mm -hmm. and we're just discussing how we're going to deal with the mosquitoes because literally as soon as the sun set, a swarm of mosquitoes came in here. I put the kids down in that cabin and shut the doors because there's no mosquitoes in there but like it is next level mosquito. The boys are meant to be sleeping outside. Oh, you bought a mosquito net, didn't you, Forrest? Yeah, I got a camping mosquito net for Christmas. Very excited <laughs> about that tonight. Sick. <laughs> Elaine is making chocolate milk and I didn't want any. And I looked down and I'm like, but I didn't have any chocolate milk. And I realised that I was bleeding. Mm, what are you doing, Fozzie? Um, just importing all the footage. Got 100 gigabyte over the last two days. So I hope this um, Starlink satellite internet is going to be able to upload it all for the it's first good. time. I uploaded 60 gigabyte really? in like maybe six hours. Oh, amazing. On okay. passage. Really? On passage, yeah. Game changer. Yeah. What's you got there, Jamie? Some, uh, some fly, fly mesh. And we're going to see what we can whip up for tonight to keep the Mozzies out. Riley's passed out. He turned white as a ghost and we were patching him up. You right, babe? Mmm. You need some sugar? You should have taken that hot chocolate when I offered it to you. I've just eaten about 85 kilos of wholemeal pasta. What just happened, Elena? I am down and Lenny are hungry and I came up here in the clean kitchen that I didn't want to get dirty again and I made them a cheese toasty and then as I was moving it from here to here, it fell in the pot of water. <laughs> so now they got a soggy cheese toasty, but I don't think they'll notice. It's been a big day. Oh my god. One night up the river. <laughs> what you got? What are you looking at? You want a book? All right, you pick one. Oh, the places you'll go. Before we get too far up the river, I wanted to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is AG1. We're so 
grateful for sponsors like AG1 and for all of you guys for watching these videos because without you all we would not be able to live this incredible lifestyle that we do. Now for those of you that don't know what AG1 is, it is a formula that is so easy to make. You just mix one scoop with every eight ounces of water and you shake it. It dissolves super easy. Kind of tastes a bit like pineapple with hints of vanilla, maybe a bit of green apple. And AG1 is what bridges the gap in your daily nutrition. It covers all of your bases. It's got 75 vitamins and minerals. All that scientists indicate is essential for human health is in here. So if we've had a big day sailing or you know we've, we've spent a day on land and we didn't exactly eat right, it's nice to know that we're covered. And on top of that, we don't want to have to worry about buying a whole bunch of different supplements. It's all just in here. So one pouch costs $79, whereas if you were to buy everything that's in here, including the pre and probiotics, there's antioxidants in here, stress adaptogens, it supports your brain health. If you were to buy all that individually, it costs around $225. So it's a lot cheaper and such an easy habit to get into. And if you want to try AG1, they're actually going to give you five travel packs for free today, as well as a year's supply of their vitamin D3 and K2 drops. All with your first purchase today. I'm going to pop the link in the description box below. Give it a go. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. Thanks so much, guys. Enjoy. Do take advantage. So, for today's mission, we'd continue navigating deeper and we plan to go on a little expedition using our dinghy. And then we'd be checking out a tiny village here to see what the locals are up to and hopefully meet someone who could show us around more. Well, everyone got a good sleep last night. Jamie, how did you go outside? Oh, it's such beautiful sleep. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're all feeling fresh this morning and a few of us just hopped in the dinghy and we're going up a tributary right now. We just saw a huge beehive. So beautiful, Darwin's been saying, we're going to the jungle for days now. We made it to the jungle. Yeah. Look at the boys just sitting there eating grapes. Not many little boys get to do this. Riley was right. A few kids experience their youth sailing the world. My fear is that Lenny and Darwin won't grasp their unique upbringing for a while. Both from middle class backgrounds, Riley and I were financially independent when we embarked on this journey 10 years ago. A year in, we even ran out of money, which pushed us to commit fully to our YouTube channel to sustain our lifestyle we loved so much. Those challenges taught us resilience and gratitude. As for the boys, we've got plans to ground them. Like maybe a stint on a gritty old fishing boat to toughen them up and hopefully foster appreciation for their experiences. This is the tiny town of Billet. It has a school, a mosque, and one or two small stores. The people here have a deep connection to the land, and of course, the river, which have been integral parts of their livelihoods for generations. Traditionally, communities here relied on self-sustaining fishing, agriculture, and hunting. However, over the past few years, the rise of tourism has a lot of locals becoming involved in the ecotourism industry. Tell me again what's happened. Jamie's got the... Everyone don't breathe. <sighs> oh my gosh, that's bad. Bad? Yeah. Well, Jamie said, I'm going to go for a walk. So we all said, oh, well, we'll all come to town. And then he went for a walk, but he took the boat key with him. And the kids are thirsty. So I've had to start up with this piece of string. Good job. If anyone wants to steal a dinghy, this is how you do it. Got back from town, there wasn't much there. A tiny little convenience store with the very, very basics. Yeah, people are living the simple life here. There was a little school as well. I saw a mosque, we actually heard it from the boat. Heard the call to prayer. A couple of dogs and cats and that's about it. Actually, on the roofs here, they have these speakers that blast animal sounds. They're not playing now, but when we were motoring up the river yesterday, we heard these crazy, sound like bird sounds. And I'm not sure what it's for, but I'm going to ask the local who's coming to pick us up soon um, to show us some wildlife. I'm going to ask him what the sounds are for. I'm guessing it's to keep away the monkeys, but I'm not 100%. It was so loud, hey. Did you hear the animal sounds when we were motoring yesterday on the speaker? 
blasting on the speakers. On the speaker? Yeah, they have speakers on the roofs um, of some, some of the houses and it sounds like bird noises. Weird, like monkey sound, like loud, super loud. Well, maybe loud. they're monkey sounds. I couldn't figure nah, it, it out. it did sound kind of artificial now that you say it. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Why do your eyes go up like that when you laugh? Hey? <laughs> How are you going? I'm needing, found myself needing to really cool down so I covered myself in a bucket. You sit on the trance and the wind comes underneath you and over you, it's really nice. It's like floating. Yeah, we're all just a little bit itchy from last night, but considering how many mosquitoes there were, we did really well to not get completely mauled. Forest saw fireflies the other night. Yeah, this place is um, famous for its fireflies. I wonder if there'll be any here at this anchorage. Well, this is Mommy, crazy. Mommy, What is it, darling? I'm in a purple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, thanks for letting me know. Let's go, come on. Now what are you gonna do? You want a hand? <laughs> now, let me go. <laughs> you won't be doing that one again, will ya? All right, Tarzan, you ready for some orangutan visits this afternoon? Are you coming with me too? We're all coming. Sure am. We're all coming. Uh, by the way, so just make sure you, you need to use your life jacket because yeah. we're going to the small river, the Penango River. Just use your life jacket. Yeah. We can all swim. in the location of the elephants. <laughs> yeah, he's in his life jacket. That's probably perfect. Well, that is Play the animal sound. Oh, for the birds coming at the, at the inside there, oh. they're calling the birds oh. and then to come inside at the. Oh, home so they there. want more birds? Yeah, they sell the home of the bird. When, oh, the nest? Yeah, the nest. They cannot use the, the same the same nest. nest. Yeah. They, they build a, a new one. Okay. There you go. We just learned that the loud recordings playing on the speakers were of swiftlet birdsong, and it was to attract more cave swiftlets to move in and build their nests. These nests are constructed from the bird's saliva, and eating bird nest soup is a delicacy here in Malaysia, as well as China, Vietnam, Thailand, and Singapore. These nests are prized for their texture and supposed health benefits. There's concerns about the industry's sustainability as the harvesting of swiftlet nests puts pressure on bird populations. And so there's been efforts to regulate and promote sustainable harvesting practices here in Borneo. Check him out. How many species Where? of monkey we got? We got three different species. And the Probius has got the big... Proboscis. Beautiful nose. Proboscis, the big, beautiful nose. Check him out, he's looking right at you, mate. Hey, monkey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got it. Crazy. What a weird looking dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh. A monkey. Just 15 minutes into our boat tour with Bob, we'd spotted five different species of monkeys, and you'll be pleased to know that Riley didn't have to punch a single one. One animal we couldn't wait to see was the orangutan, which sadly is classified as critically endangered due to the expansion of palm oil plantations and logging. Approximately 100,000 square kilometres of Borneo's forest has been cleared since 1980. Palm oil is good at hiding in plain sight and is used by numerous big corporations for so many things we use every day, like snacks, cosmetics and even biofuels. Here in Borneo, there's an urgent need for people to support conservation efforts to protect these primates and their habitats from further decline. Habitat conservation, anti-poaching measures and sustainable land use are crucial for these guys' survival. Nowadays, you even have to watch out for products whose certifications lure you into a false sense of sustainably grown palm oil, something our friends over at Greenpeace recently exposed. 
I'll link their report in the description below if you want to read more on that. What did we just see, Ellie? Crocodile. Big Yay. one. <laughs> I live in your here for your dinner. Yeah. I just took the kids home because they were so tired and complaining for a lot of actually Darwin was fine but Lenny was very hungry and tired. So I brought the kids back and the rest of the crew went to town to a local restaurant where they're getting some amazing local Malaysian food. I'm gonna make dinner here and eat by myself. And then some of us, I'm not sure who, but are going uh, for a night cruise. I'm not sure how much footage you'll be able to get for you because it is, it's gonna be dark, but this is the time the crocodiles all come to the surface and you can really spot them. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we've been really disorganized <laughs> this evening. Take you somewhere, so you know I care, but it's so cold. Okay, so what's happening? We're back from dinner, which I didn't film, Alana. Aww. And we're gonna go nighttime hunting for crocodiles. We'll have fun, guys. We're hunting for crocodiles. I wanna kiss you, make you feel alright. I'm just so tired. You think there's crocs by the boat? Any fireflies last night, Jamie? No. No? Damn. So, a friend asked me, um, did you get any good photos? And so I was flicking through the camera last night. <laughs> that good. <laughs> so wait, that's the first one. Oh my god. Yep, well done. Second. <laughs> 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 He's looking into your soul. So Do you think he felt like he was busted? He's just was like, oh god, they've caught me. Hello, everyone. We are. So we stopped here because there's power lines, we can't go any further, or we probably can't, and you just would not want to risk that. I have got no idea what height they're at. So we've come quite a far way up the river, we've seen some crocodiles, some kingfishers, uh, no elephants yet, I don't know that that's going to happen, but we're as far up the river as we're going to go, so we're going to start heading back down, back up towards the ocean. We can either go sort of left, which is where we came from, or right, which is around to where we're gonna go to this world-class dive site called Sipadan, which is the other thing that I've been planning, this river and that place for oh, a year, I think, maybe. So yeah, I've, I've been like as excited for both. I'm like champing at the bit, as it were. Don't show, don't show everyone. No, it's not that kind. No, it's not that kind of YouTube channel. No. Where Just show the bottom, the dangly bit down the bottom. So the gauze has become part of my skin. Riley has become one with the gauze pad. We didn't redress it yesterday. We should have. So yeah, we just want to do a little recap as we head out the river. That was a really beautiful adventure. I, I am sad we didn't see elephants, but the, the local last night told us that there were actually five more hours up the river, five hours. Under the power lines, which we couldn't go up. Yeah. So, to me, like, life on the boat is the main event, and you 
throw in some elephants, that's a nice little extra, but it's never it's never about that for me. No, no, our life revolves around the boat and where we can put that boat. Um, it's the heart of sailing the Vagabond and we don't usually venture too far away from it. And we would have had to hop in a car to go see the elephants. So yeah. I'm pretty sad, but it's I'm okay. Not. I'm also really looking forward to getting back to sailing in blue water again. Like yeah, some we nice need to go. aqua blue. So we're not going to be in blue water tonight. We're anchoring up by the entrance. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long river. We've, we came in real deep. <laughs> For those of you that know, when, when you... So I had a pretty bad cut. Like I chewed my finger up. But then we put salve on. And then what's that stuff? Gauze. It's a gauze pad. Gauze, but, but I thought that the creamy salve would stop the gauze from sticking to the scab. But it's really in there now, so I'm just soaking it. Your skin really. What should I have skin. done? We probably should have put more cream on it. But yeah, let us know in the comments. There was lots of cream on it. No space, because we got five adults on board and two kids. I know, it's totally crazy. Totally crazy. It's just started raining and everyone's getting excited. Oh, exciting. It hasn't rained in a while. Jamie s himself. Really? It's the first storm in the Borneo jungle. <laughs> <laughs> no, a little, a little rain cloud came overhead. And the uh, cloud cover and the rain is both very, very welcome. Between Ellie and I, we accidentally made a lot of extra oats over the past couple of days. So we're gonna make oat cookies today, super healthy ones. Um, I don't know, I was asleep. <laughs> Riley was asleep, what happened you two? I, I was driving for the last four hours and I just finished by grounding the boat on the <laughs> sandbank over there. Jamie, Riley! <laughs> <laughs> Lucky it's all mud. It it's all mud, we're right. So it's, I was watching the, we're trying to anchor here and Jamie's like, let's do a big 360 and we can just check out the, the depth to make sure we have enough. Going around, it's like three meters, three meters, and then it just goes bang, nothing. And I'm like, we're about to hit, and I just feel the boat go mm. like that. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, that's the beauty of a retractable centerboard, I guess, because Riley just, Riley and Jamie just put it up, reverse straight off of it, mm. and hopefully no harm done. We're just anchoring the boat after running aground. Luckily, it's all mud, so everyone's really chill. It's easy to um, get off, and the tide was going up. So we all got a fair few bites over the past couple of days, and. Today, Darwin woke up from his nap just crying and screaming because his neck was so itchy. So there's a big rash on the back of his neck and I've just been digging through the medical kit to find him. Something to soothe it. We found what we need. If you guys capsize, I will laugh so much. <laughs> of course we're going to capsize. You, it's crocodile infested waters. I hope we're going to capsize, it's going to be a bathtub. Shit, yeah, yeah do you, I guess you need the oars. Are the oars clipped in just in case you do? Yeah. No, we're going to take them out. They're a bloody white. We are setting up the tender so we can go for a sail. The last time you'd have seen this dinghy fully set up was back in January of last year when our floating home was still under construction. We've only just gotten the chance to try her out on the water now and it'll just casually be whilst the boys are surrounded by leathery onlookers. No thanks. And the rig is gigantic. Mm. It's like uh, the mast so is we're huge. probably going to be 
fairly overpowered, so we're just so uh, contemplating what might happen in crocodile infested waters. Yeah, Jamie, you have come from a race sailing background. I heard you say something. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big stick on it. You know, the boat's no bigger than a laser, probably smaller than a laser, and the mast is as big, if not bigger, than a laser. So I think we'll be scooting along. It's not super windy, but we've got we got 15 knots. That's the rudder. And this is the centerboard. That looks to be a mast. Centerboard going down. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, wait, are you good? That was it. Yes, sir. Your lane yes. just cut. Yeah. Sorry. I thought that was going to be like a. I'm lying. What the? Oh. <laughs> Looking good. Good night. Woo! <laughs> oh, they're cooking. Yay! Woo! Ready! Ready! Woo! We've been waiting for this moment to play with our toys for like two years. OC tenders make amazing tenders that also sail. That's what these guys are on now. Great, finally we're really enjoying what we've worked so hard for and spent years building. Done it. Wait, back here. <laughs> oh, what are you playing? I play baby rope. Okay. And we are having a sleep. Okay. <laughs> Jamie's on dinner duty. What what are we cooking? We've got a cauliflower, pineapple, chickpea curry happening. Mm -hmm. So just whipping it up now. Sounds, sounds so good. We broke the can opener, so this becomes the next. Oh, I'm very good at that. You the can, next mission. Yeah, leave it with me. All right, there yeah. we go. It's not sexy, animal. <laughs> there are going to be people crying. I know. That's a good knife. It's a really good knife. The key is to have a good knife and the rest is easy. Some pineapple. Last piece of pineapple, okay? Yes. You want to take your pick? Uh, I want to pick it. That's done. You went all the way around. That was actually really impressive. Oh, yes. I remember I built it. It's still there. It's actually really having some lunch and I'm just so appreciative of the accidental ridiculous amounts of sourdough that we bought. We bought how many loaves? Was it 12 loaves of sourdough? Yeah, it's brought us much joy. So nice to be out in the open ocean again and really moving. We were so still in that room for so long but this feels like freedom. And the water's getting bluer, it's nice. I can't wait to get to these dive sites. Like it just looks ridiculous, the clarity of the water the sea life. Very, very lucky. So we're just coming up to our pass up here where I want to sail in with the full main and the jib and Elaine is saying no, we'd be more responsible if we went in with just the jib. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to end up doing. It's quite a tight pass. If you look here, it looks like it's impossible 
Ain't nobody sailing through that. So yeah, we're coming up to this pass now, over this reef. We're gonna turn up into the wind and drop the mainsail and come in under the headsail. I just made that decision then. What do you think, Pants? You can see the reef? Yeah, I can see the edge of it. I'm just gonna round it. The blue water is very different from the reef, so it's good lighting. It'll be fun. What are you doing in there, James? We just, uh, we just had a bit of a tinker. We went to use the ocean vault and the whole throttle housing just twisted, so there's a big nut here. We just done that up and should be Bob's your uncle. That's tight. Toy? Toy. Toy like a tiger? Wait like a tiger. Come in, mate. Hey, dude, how you going? Did you have a big sleep? Oh, hey. You had a big sleep, didn't you? You know we're nearly there? Yeah. Mama's just helming us around the corner here. We're dodging some reef. Oh, do you want to go out where it's a bit cooler? Are you hot? No. No, you want to stay? You want to stay inside? Outside? Okay. Okay, so this is concerning. We just heard like a, a police siren and a police boat came over and they just said, hey, do you guys have an escort to go through this area? And we said no, because from the research we'd done and the advice we've been given at the at the marina, no one has had any issues. This place used to be bad for piracy maybe 10 years ago. There's been a few incidents, but yeah, we thought we were good to go. And they're like, oh my gosh, you have kids on board, like kidnappings. And it's really, um, <laughs> it's really brought on some anxiety I didn't have before. We we're completely oblivious. We don't know what uh, happened ah. in the sea, right? No. Sometimes if, if they want to kidnap, they do kidnap. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen now. They're recommending an escort for this area. You should see the big gun they have on board. Only this, only this you have okay. from Malaysia government. I mean, we could, we we did everything that was required. What is this? It's fired. I can call up, but that's all the paperwork that we have. We did everything that we that was required. See, the paperwork's not there; it just wasn't given to us. So no swimming here. Yeah, not nice. Oh, how about <laughs> Not nice. Don't, don't. Right. Good night. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, easy. Remember, don't jump. No don't, swimming. Don't swim. No, we won't swim. All right. It's beautiful. Don't, don't, don't type anything with me, don't. Alright? <laughs> okay. See you, Nelson. Alright. See you, fellas. Oh, I've got to send them an email. We're missing a piece of paperwork, which is always the case. So, did you know that? That we're not allowed to leave tomorrow? That's fine. It's a nice spot. So what are they worried about? They're just that's, that's more just a bureaucratic thing, a sign-off thing. It was hundred percent a bureaucratic thing. You said, oh yeah, there's five adults and two kids, and he goes, two kids yeah. here. Yeah, kidnapping. He just said it's dangerous. He said dangerous like eight times. Yeah, he just said kidnapping, and I was like, oh my god. But then they they haven't had anyone kidnapped for how long? Like three days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then Lenny climbed the mast, and he goes, dangerous. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Can you tell I'm stressed? <laughs> I'm stress eating right now. Join us for a whole hour in next week's episode to see if those pirates catch up with us. Riley is claiming this next sail as the best sail of his life. Lean forward. And we all turn into kids again. Thanks for being with us here today. And yeah, do let us know in the comments what you think about sailing in the Sulu Sea, given the recent history of pirates here.